The surviving Western Roman Empire is widely recognized as having fallen on the 4th of September, 476 AD, when Flavius Odoacer deposed Romulus Augustulus and declared himself ruler of all Italy. However, Rome had been largely in collapse for at least a century prior, and by the time of the last Roman emperor in the West, Rome existed more by name than fact. The collapse of Rome left a power vacuum across Europe, launching the continent into centuries of continuous warfare and cultural stagnation known as the Dark Ages. Hello and welcome to the Infographic Show. Today we're taking a look at what a day in the life of the Dark Ages was like in ancient England. England, or Britannia as it was known back then, had been only partially conquered by the Romans, who limited their advance at the famed Hadrian's Wall. The Romans never fully subjugated the local tribe, so with the fall of Rome, Britannia became a lawless, free-for-all land of opposing warlords and self-declared kings. For these early rulers, their kingdoms and right to rule extended only so far as their soldiers could reach, and the hapless peasants caught in the middle would often find themselves forced to pay taxes and tribute to separate rulers who claimed their lands as their own. Governments didn't exist at this time, and government services didn't consist of much more than armed soldiers coming by your door to demand taxes. With the collapse of Rome, the entire European continent experienced an economic crash, and major industries such as pottery making and construction all but disappeared overnight. Without a strong centralized government to print coins and enforce monetary policy, civilization across Europe returned back to bartering, and taxes were collected in the form of trade goods food, or even physical service in the Lord's army. Feudalism eventually began to take root in its most primitive form, with local lords granting parcels of land to favored soldiers, typically cavalrymen, as these elite soldiers of the era were much valued for their horses since trained war horses became much rare. When a local lord died, there were often no clear lines of secession, prompting all-out war between the king's surviving family and other feuding nobles. Religion continued to spread across Europe. Judaism and Islam competed with paganistic beliefs, but the young and still growing Christian faith quickly garnered support across the continent. The example of Jesus standing up to authoritarian Jewish elders in the New Testament resonated particularly well with peasants currently under the heel of brutal lord. However, the clergy was not truly organized yet, and the authority of the church, which was still based primarily in Italy, was not fully recognized as far north as Britain. Different brands of Christianity appeared, leading to interfaith conflict and further dividing the population. The clergy was starting to emerge as a separate social class, but they remained mostly independent from each other. Or any centralized control structure. These early Christians helped to preserve a great amount of ancient texts and knowledge that may have been lost forever to rampaging barbarians, securing Roman books and manuscripts with their growing monasteries. Life for the average peasant was difficult, dangerous, and tough. With the collapse of industry, most people worked as sustenance farmers, growing enough to feed themselves and trade just enough excess for needed goods such as metal tools. Wheat, barley, oats, and rye were staple crops of the time, and they were supplemented by beans and peas. Apples, plums, berries, and various nuts were eaten when in season, though the primary diet of a Dark Ages peasant was various cereal crops ground into flour and made into bread. Locally caught fish and sometimes even deer or wild boar were an occasional treat, but animal proteins were rare, with sheep raised for their wool and milk and beef being too pricey for most people. People also consumed large quantities of very weak ale, as most drinking water was unsafe. Though popularized by myths, mead was actually a very rare drink enjoyed mostly only by the elite. Skilled craftsmen such as blacksmiths were extremely rare and highly valued, and the merchant or craftsman guilds of the Middle Ages did not exist yet. Education was all but non-existent, with typically only the clergy having the ability to read. Most nobles were illiterate. Farmers not only worked the lands, but they would also often be called up into military service during non-harvest times, with most lords using conscripted armies rather than full-time professional soldiers. Medicine in the Dark Ages consisted mostly of herbal remedies known as work cunning in England. Practices such as leeching to remove bad blood from an individual and superstitious use of magical remedies prospered, and sadly most ailments became fatal. Yet some of the foundations of real medicine were being rediscovered after the extinction of the Roman healing arts, with medical treatments for things such as styes involving onion, garlic, wine, and various other ingredients containing very effective antibiotic and antibacterial properties. 
Rudimentary surgeries were also taking place. An 11th century skull discovered in the Warren Percy medieval village showed that a heavy blow to the head had been treated by cutting away part of the bone in the skull to relieve pressure on the brain. With the discovery of anesthesia over a millennia away, we don't care to consider just how painful such a procedure may have been. Across Europe, the fall of Rome had seen people return to a mostly isolated lifestyle, with most people living in small communities or farmsteads. Yet major cities and establishments did survive, and settlements such as those near modern York even exploded in population. These primitive cities were fairly squalid by modern comparisons, with none of that famed Roman plumbing or luxury such as public baths and waterworks. Refuse in the form of trash, dung, and rotting timber were discarded directly into the streets, and deposits built up at a rate of roughly one inch a year. In these horrible conditions, parasites and disease proliferated, and the average life expectancy was a shocking 31 years. Violence, disease, and poor nutrition all created a very high infant mortality rate. But if a child was one of the lucky few who made it to 20 years, he or she could typically expect to live into his or her 40s. Life in the Dark Ages was often short, brutal, and fraught with hardships. The fall of Rome created a power and cultural identity vacuum within a continent that had for centuries identified itself solely as Roman. And with Rome gone, vengeful barbarians rampaged across the bones of the empire and effectively stamped out the last remnants of Roman society, including its economy, law and order, and scientific knowledge. Yet the Dark Ages didn't completely stop the development of human civilization, as it's so often believed. Outside of Europe, life continued on relatively unchanged, with mighty eastern kingdoms rising and falling and the influence of the Islamic Caliph expanding across Africa and the Middle East. But for the average peasant of Dark Age Britannia, life remained a struggle for survival. Families had to fight to produce enough food to feed themselves, while often being brutalized by competing warlords or self-appointed lords. 